hello, hello, everybody. My name is Samuel, and today we are going to be talking about our newest project, um, Project Lawn Dart. Um, hopefully it doesn't come, come in as a lawn dart. It would be very bad. Um, but it's supposed to be a Mach 1.31 uh, rocket that goes to about... I think it's 0.8 miles in altitude in our sim, um, and it is going to be powered by basically the most powerful rocket motor um, you can you can fly without getting a, uh, a license, a certification, an L1 certification, high-powered rocketry. Um, so. Today, we are going to be going over the um, lawn dart um, designs and schematics, and we're going to go through the early stages of making lawn dart. So, right now, we're going to jump onto the computer, and we are going to look at the simulations and the schematics. Okay, so... Now we are going to go through the uh, simulations and the 3D files. Um, we're going to go through the simulations first. Um, so this is just a rough estimate of all of the flight characteristics of our, um, the lawn dart rocket. Um, currently, I think this is in Mark Four three or four-ish terms. I think it's Mark IV, because Mark IV has the, um, we have our altimeter, um, to help, so we can tell what, if we get it back, we can tell how high it's gonna go. So, we have tested with a loadable motor to keep, to get the cost down, but we decided to go with the, um, single-use preloaded motor, because the it just go so much faster. So down at the bottom here, um, we have we're, it's simulated to go about Mach 1.31 and um, almost one and a half kilometers in altitude, which is off the top of my head, I believe about 0.8 miles, roughly. 0.8 to about one mile, um, yeah, probably about roughly, roughly a mile. So our launch rod is six feet tall, and it's gonna be going um, uh, meters a second. It's roughly like 75-ish miles an hour. Um, as soon as after six feet of altitude so um and our max acceleration is about um 50 ish uh the times of 50 ish times the force of earth's gravity or 50 g's um so uh, it's very there's a lot of acceleration and um Mach 1.31, 444, and um, we have a very small parachute. Um, we want to make it, we don't want to have, we don't want anything to break. We may, we may actually transition to a streamer, um, but for now, our Mark IV configuration, we have a parachute um, to uh, allow us it, um, to come down relative come down relatively fast so that it doesn't drift miles and miles and miles away from the launch site. Now the optimum delay 11 seconds that means 11 and a half seconds that means we're gonna have one and a half seconds of gaining speed um, before the chute deploys and um, that's okay um, we that's within roughly margins of what we can do um, the parish we, um, otherwise, if it was, if we had a, like, a 15 second delay, we probably would have to have, 
Uh, we probably have to step it down because we try have to step down the delay because um, it would most likely break the parachute after because it is its aerodynamic index is coefficient of drag is very low, um, especially with these fins. Um, it is a they are a, an aerodynamic profile. So I'm gonna transfer over to the uh, uh, fusion file, and so here's the rocket, and um, so here's our nose cone. Um, so it comes up, it comes apart, um, so we can put the. Uh, Altimeter. We have uh, screw uh, screw threads for the altimeter, and um, so the uh, this is a rough model of the altimeter inside the nose cone, and the nose cone is about three millimeters thick of solid PLI plastic, um, allowing us to get a um, even with the altimeter, allowing us to get a stability of. 0.374. Now that might seem really small, but that's just because um, the, I think like 25% of the mass of the whole rocket will be burned in one and a half seconds. And um, so the, uh, the motor is 130 grams, which is more than, more than, which would more than double the, um, the weight of the entire rocket and so uh, once we burn all the propellant it um, especially after the we're gonna be going so fast and af at the end of the launch rod and we're gonna have burned so much propellant that uh, our stability caliber uh, by the time we get off the launch rod is probably gonna be about one ish roughly um, and then by the time we get up to Apogee, it's probably going to be around two and a half. So our stability caliber is going to be very high uh, by burnout. Um, so our body, the body of the um, rocket is a, uh, it's a 29 millimeter tube, uh, cardboard tube that is... Uh, it's from Apogee Components uh, website, and uh, it is 33 centimeters long, and uh, that's basically all that information I have on the tube. And then our fin can, this one is uh, like a Mark, this is from a Mark II fin can. We have, rough, we have two designs because um, both both of the people in 3D space um, don't can't share a project. Um, we have not figured out a way to actively share a project. So this fin can is outdated. Um, the newer fin can uh, has larger fillets. So we have, I think I doubled the size, roughly doubled the size of the fillets, um, and I clipped clipped the. Um, Fins so they're to so they're roughly along this line they're slightly shorter to increase the Mach number um, since uh, the extra stability was not needed and it was the it had negligible in impact upon the uh, It, a lot, lots of impact upon the uh, drag, but negligible impact upon the stability of the vehicle. So that is our um, that's our uh, rocket. So um, oh, one more thing: uh, the motor is a Aerotech G eighty. Um, it's G eighty thirteen T. As you saw in the simulation, um, it is a uh, it's the newest uh, Blue Thunder uh, rocket motor uh, from Aerotech. So it has 
I think about 130-ish newton seconds of total impulse, and uh, has uh, rated 80 seconds of average thrust. So, uh, and with it costs 37 dollars, I believe, on the uh, Apogee website, Apogee Rockets website, but. Um, that is for the hazmat fee, uh, which is the downside of buying a motor that is, uh, I believe, an F size or larger. Um, because I, you have to have a $40 hazmat fee, which is uh, not good for economical purposes. So, that is our rocket um, in the CAD models and in the simulations. Um, so now we are going to transfer um, over to the next segment. Okay, I am back again, talking head Samuel. And so now that we've gone over the uh, simulations and the fusion files, um, we are going to throw it onto the printer and um, we're going to print it. So... Okay, now I'm back again, and now that we've got our parts printed, um, I went I went ahead and uh, assembled the uh, rocket here. Um, I would like to say uh, that Apogee Rockets um, dot com they uh, like they give you the schematics, well not the schematics, but they give you pretty accurate dimensions of these tubes. So we were able to design and uh, design and print these basically first time um, without, ha without having to redesign the tolerances and they basically fit perfectly. Um, they're all snug fit and here let me see if I can. So it's a, it's a pretty snug fit. I can hold it without a motor. The motor weighs about as much as the whole rocket, so we probably won't be able to hold it like this with a motor in it. But um, the nose cone is on there. It stays on there pretty good. And um, once we... And the fin can is on there quite good. It is um, kind of vacuumed to the tube. Um, and once we epoxy this to the uh, to the tube, it is not going to come off, um, especially during coast phase, because the um, the motor has a thrust ring, and if it if it if the epoxy failed, and uh, it wouldn't matter during the th one and a half seconds of thrust um, when it is experiencing the highest G's. I think it's like 50 G's, and so um, it wouldn't because the thrust ring is keeping the can on. But we really need the epoxy for the coast phase when you don't have the thrust of the motor keeping the um, fin can on, so that we can so that the fins don't slide off. Um, now, uh, as you saw in the uh, fusion. Um, we have a, I might be able to get it, um, but we have a very, an aerodynamic profile for the fins, um, so that, 
um, we can get an extra 0 0.05 Mach out of the um, out of the motor because the motor is an $80 motor. But now it might not seem a lot, but compared to the Starship, which was about $18 per launch, and which is roughly uh, about four times as cheap and um, are a normal just like low powered rocketry launch on like a C engine that's about oh two and a half dollars a launch so so that's like 30 times ish more uh, exp this is more 30 times more expensive than just a normal C engine launch so it's pretty expensive so um, I think that is going to conclude our uh, introduction with the uh, lawn dart program and hopefully you can stay tuned for um, some upcoming videos about um, preparing this for launch and painting it and sanding it so that um, there's no ridges on it and um, I also think we soon-ish we should get a um, should get some new uh, hard drives for a um, large editing NAS so if you like uh, computer a computery stuff and um, just want to see how um, we are gonna go ahead and go forward with uh, storing a bunch of data and how NAS, how NAS um, servers work. Um, you're going to want to stay tuned for that. So this is 3D Space Model Rocketry, and I hope you enjoyed this video.